This video is going to explore some of the ways things can go wrong in the TMJ and follows on from part one of the tour of the TMJ which looked at the healthy joint. See below for a link to that video. A survey of teenagers in the 13 to 15 age range found that the majority, over 90% for the girls, had displaced discs in at least one of their joints. So our tour of the TMJ needs to look at some of the things that can go wrong with many of the things that go wrong being interrelated. Things that go wrong with the jaw joint are usually referred to as TMD, temporomandibular joint disorder. Many non-medical people will just say, I have TMJ, meaning that they have TMD. The challenge with the term TMD or TMJ is that it is used for all joint disorders, whether caused by deformity, disease, misalignment, dysfunction of articulation, misfitting teeth, or any associated structures. We're going to focus on more geometrically related dysfunctions, various types of disc displacement and changes to the condyle or fossa anatomies. Let's start with that common problem identified in the survey of teenagers, the displaced TMJ disc. How can a TMJ disc become displaced? Most commonly by trauma. Have you ever fallen forwards and hit your chin on the ground? Or suffered any other impact that would push your chin up and back? You may suffer pain or jaw clicking for a few weeks, but if the pain goes away, most of us figure the problem has fixed itself. That's not always the case, which is why such a high proportion of the population actually have displaced discs. So, what can displaced discs look like? In this animation, we go through different types of disc displacement as described by Dr. Mark Piper, an internationally acclaimed TMJ surgeon. Although the animation implies a progression from less severe conditions to most severe conditions, it's not necessarily the case that the disc will always deteriorate into a more severe state. However, the more severe the disc displacement, the more likely it is that things will get worse. For reference, we start with a healthy joint, with the condyle fully seated and the disc tracking its motion on opening and closing. Then we show a slightly displaced disc. The condyle has been pushed back a little and the disc is slightly forward of its healthy position. Otherwise, motion is close to normal, and it's likely that the patient will not notice anything unusual, except that their teeth may not fit together as well as they used to. With a more severe rearward displacement, pain may be felt because of the compression of the retrodiscal tissue. You can see the biconcave part of the disc is forward of the condyle. When the jaw is opened, the condyle jumps forward into the lower concave part of the disc and makes a click. Looking at this in 3D, we can see two different types of displaced disc. First, there is a displacement of just the lateral pole. It flips on and off, influenced by the movement of the pressure area between the condyle and the fossa. Recapture is also possible in a fully displaced disc, with both medial and lateral poles displaced. The condyle can also be pushed far enough back with severe enough stretching of the attaching ligaments that the disc is no longer recaptured on opening. Sometimes the presence of the congealed disc in front of the condyle can stop it moving altogether, which you'll see clearly as a sideways opening of the jaw. Compare this to the motion when a completely displaced disc is recaptured. The jaw initially opens to the side, then jumps back to the center when the condyle clicks back onto the disc. Looking at the side view, we see how things from this point might get progressively worse. First, while a disc that has recently displaced might maintain something close to its original shape, over time it will become more of a shapeless blob. Thinly stretched ligaments and some retrodiscal tissue are all that remains between the condyle and the fossa. Sometimes the scarred retrodiscal tissue forms a pseudodisc that is relatively stable and functions in place of the disc. More likely, this weak layer will wear away, allowing bone to rub on bone. The condyle will become shorter and the eminence flatter. A shortening condyle, or as we are showing here, shortening in both condyles, will produce an open bite, or if the change is slow enough, the teeth and bones might adapt, but they'll be stepped or tilted. Discerning the true state of the TMJs requires looking at radiographs of one sort or another. 
A panorex can give you an idea of when things are going wrong, though the condyles may be indistinct and there's no image of the disc. A CBCT scan is better, allowing clearer analysis of the health of the condyle and guessing at the position of the disc. An MRI is the best, allowing the trained eye to spot the position of the disc. Now, if I go to the left joint, full different story. Ear canal, fossa, eminence, the disc is way out here, and here's the condyle, but you can see there is no cortic cortex on the top. There's no cortical layer there. So this is severe active osteoarthritic damage going on. On the right side image, you have the open mouth view. So the condyle is under the eminence. The disc is pushed way out and you here have, again, the condyle under the eminence without any protection. And that's where you get that destruction when you get that convex bone against the convex bone. To conclude, the state of the jaw joint influences what is happening with the teeth. Catch a jaw problem early and you have a chance of halting or slowing the damage. Catch a jaw problem late and you'll know something is wrong by the quantity of the damage. If you'd like to keep learning with animations like the ones you saw in this video, then we'd suggest using our study aid in conjunction with Dr. Dawson's definitive book, Functional Occlusion, From TMJ to Smile Design. The animations walk side by side each chapter to give you the best visual and content-rich learning experience to take you to a solid understanding of the TMJ and occlusion. The book is available through Amazon or through Dr. Dawson's publishing company, Widium, and the study aid is available through us. I've put the links in the description below.